While East Timor clearly has a long way to go, global nation-building efforts appear to have been a success in the once war-torn country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Here in the capital, Sarajevo, the streets are bustling with shoppers, stylish students having coffee, rising skyscrapers, and well-stocked markets. But Bosnia demonstrates that with fragile states, appearances can be deceiving. Fifteen years of peace and reconstruction here have failed to dispel the underlying instability stemming from ethnic divisions entrenched by civil war and segregated politics. Now, Bosnia struggles under increasing tensions and the impact of its inability to rise from its history to become a truly normal European state. It was never going to be easy to put this country back together from a brutal civil war that taught the world the term ethnic cleansing. Between 1992 and 1995, 100,000 people died here. Mass graves are still being discovered. But 15 years ago, American and European diplomats persuaded bitter adversaries to sit down at an Ohio Air Force base and agree to stop the bloodshed in what has become known as the Dayton Accords. 50,000 NATO troops helped secure the peace, and extensive investment by the international community quickly followed. Rafi Gregorian is an American diplomat overseeing Bosnia's reconstruction. There were still three war, uh, former warring armies here in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Today there's one. There used to be three intelligence services. Now there's one. There were several different taxation systems here. Today there's one, and so on. Uh, judicial reform, uh, electricity uh, uh, reform, civil service reform, public administration reform. All these things were done in the first half of, of this decade. Uh, tremendous progress. But despite these improvements, the political structure of the country leaves Bosnia vulnerable. The Dayton Agreement, necessary at the time to secure the peace, carved the country into two autonomous ethnic entities, a Serb-majority area called Republika Srpska and a federation predominantly of Bosniak Muslims and Catholic Croats. On top of this sits a national layer of government, with its own ethnically based structure. The Dayton Peace Accord was a monster. I mean, it, it, it created a monster country. Srećko Latal writes for the Balkan Investigative Reporting Network. He says this weak and complicated political system is now being manipulated by a new wave of nationalist politicians. Bosnia Herzegovina right now is facing uh, the most difficult uh, crisis since the end of, the, of its war. We have come into the situation where local leaders don't want to make it work. I mean, they deliberately block the work of joint state and entity institutions. And as a result, we are facing a major deadlock on almost complete level. We do have these political tensions, and that's because of two diverging concepts. The one is of multicultural country, the other one is of divided ethnic country. Haris Salajic serves as one of the country's three national presidents. He's been pushing for a more unified government in which the more populous Muslims would represent a majority. But that doesn't sit well in Republika Srpska's capital, Banja Luka, where Serbs are unwilling to become a minority. The glistening new government headquarters here sends the message the Serbs plan on holding on to their separate status. A military camp. Gordon Milosevic is an advisor to the Serb entity's prime minister. Well, it is, uh, it is obvious, uh, that's not a secret for anyone who knows uh, uh, Bosnia, that the uh, uh, main intention uh, in Republic of Srpska is for Bosnia-Herzegovina to remain a strongly decentralized country in line with Dayton Peace Agreement. Those who are insisting on one man, one mode system, they are basically trying to provide for a circumstance that would allow for only one people in Bosnia to rule this country and to become a dominant group. Milosevic's boss, Serb entity Prime Minister Milorad Dodik, has gone so far as to suggest a vote for Serb independence from the rest of Bosnia, something many analysts worry could lead to renewed conflict. Add to this climate the toxic ingredient of radical rhetoric from both sides. Last year, President Salajic called Republika Srpska a reward for genocide. But it is recent comments by Dodik, accusing Muslims of staging some of the biggest wartime attacks against them, that has created the greatest outcry. People of Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, that I speak with tell me the, um, the, psych the psychological atmosphere is as bad, if not worse, than it was in 1991 and 1992. 
these tensions and, and animosities that were uh, for the, all the past years present mostly only on political level among uh, local politicians uh, now are slowly affecting ordinary people. And that's what, what is really dangerous. Even if the region manages to avoid fresh conflict, the political crisis shows no sign of ending. And as daily life goes on, there are worries that ethnic divisions are being reinforced, not diminished, in the country's next generation. Here at a school in central Bosnia, happy kids of all backgrounds play together, eat together, tease, flirt and gossip together. But when the bell rings, children who are ethnically Croatian and predominantly Catholic make their way to classrooms on the first floor. Their Bosniak Muslim playmates head upstairs for their lessons. It's two schools under one roof, with two separate principals and even two names, one for each ethnicity represented. While all students use the same lesson plan for math and science, language and geography have different curriculums. So too, most worryingly, does history. And the textbooks don't address any events since a year before the war broke out. Most of the last 20 years of the history of our country is not in primary school textbooks. Muyo Sahirovic is the Muslim principal. My personal opinion is that until all sides in Bosnia agree on facts about what happened in the last 20 years, I think it is good. But I hope that we will reach a time when some things could be described in the way they actually happened. Bosnia's fragility demonstrates the perils of failing to fully address the root causes of a nation's conflict as part of the integrated rebuilding process. What was necessary to stop bloodshed 15 years ago might not be enough to ensure long-term stability, no matter how much money or effort is spent by the international community.